There are different ways of integrating SketchUp into a larger workflow that involves multiple applications. For example, let's say I'm going to design a building in SketchUp where I can work out all of the volumetric ideas and basically work out everything in 3D. Then I can bring that model into AutoCAD to create construction documents, or I could bring it into Revit architecture to create a building information model. Either way, I would need to have SketchUp Pro in order to export the information from SketchUp to one of these other programs. On the other hand, you might want to go through this workflow the other way around. Let's say you lay out your floor plan in AutoCAD, and then you want to create a 3D model of the building for presentation or for further design work. You can use SketchUp Free to import the DWG file into SketchUp. Of course, it works in the Pro version as well. And then you can use all of the features in SketchUp to design the building. You could then chain that on to the first workflow that I mentioned. Then you take that model back into AutoCAD or Revit or some other program to create a more complete set of documents for a building. Let's see an example. This last summer, I renovated my house, and I started by laying out the plan in AutoCAD, and then I brought that into SketchUp where I made a 3D model. So here's the AutoCAD file. Now all of the things below here are image formats, which aren't going to give you a 3D model at all. The exception down here is an EPIX file, which is specific to the Piranesi application. Up here we have three different formats that you can import. A digital elevation model is something you might get from a surveyor. 3DS is a very ancient format back from 3D Studio for DOS, and it's been around forever, so most applications support it. I would use this format if I was bringing in something from 3DS Max. And then there's the DWG and DXF formats, which again are very universal in the industry. Most applications will export to one of these formats. I'll choose Options. And right here, this is quite important, to preserve the drawing origin. This means that if I import this again, it's going to come in in exactly the same place. So this is essential if you plan to have multiple design revisions. Choose your scale, which is actually the type of units that you're using. And you can merge coplanar faces or orient faces. And actually, I don't think I have any faces. All of the work that I did in AutoCAD was just line work. So I'll say OK and Import. It takes a minute while SketchUp chews on this. It gives us a progress bar, and then it will report back to us with a little dialog box that tells us how many of the various types of entities that were imported here. OK. I'll go into the top view in parallel projection mode. And we have lots of different stuff that I drew in the course of the renovation. So if I was going to create a 3D model here, I would just start by getting rid of all of the extraneous information. And this is quite typical of most CAD drawings, where you have lots of different information on different layers, and you're not going to need all of it to create your model in SketchUp. Actually, this has some of the line work from the original house, which was a gambrel roof. We got rid of that in the renovation. Let's open the Layers window and see what we have. As is typical of most CAD drawings, you have quite a number of layers here. And it looks like I have different layering standards here. Some of it was drawn in AutoCAD architecture, and some of it was just drafted in plain AutoCAD. So that's why I have different standards. And so the result here is really kind of a mess. Let me just zoom in. Down here, I'd like to turn off this layer. So I'm going to select one of the lines and go to Entity Info. And there I can learn that it's on layer limestone. OK, let's turn that off. OK, well, that got rid of one of the lines here that I need. So I'm going to turn that back on and select these lines here. I'll change those onto a different layer. Now, what layer should I put them on? That's another good question. This is the kind of work that you end up doing when you import drawings from AutoCAD or another CAD program. There's really a lot of cleanup to be done. And some of this can be done in the CAD program where you created the information. Or you can take on that task here in SketchUp. There are really two different schools of thought when it comes to CAD cleanup. In School A, which I'll call Perfection, all the lines have to touch and close. Little extraneous lines need to be deleted. Everything needs to be on the right layer. And it's really quite a tall order. For example, right over here, this line doesn't meet the jam. I would have to move that over and make it touch. The stuff about these being on the wrong layers, I'd have to deal with that as well. In School B, which I'm going to call Let It Be, 
you can just leave all the CAD stuff alone and make it a group so that you can protect it. And then you go ahead and create your SketchUp geometry on top of that so it's completely separate from the original CAD drawing. I'm gravitating more these days towards School B, and I'm finding it actually faster than trying to clean up everything in the messy CAD drawing. I'll show you both methods so you can choose for yourself. Let me just finish this task related to this one line. I'll select this lower line to learn what layer it's on, layer 2, and then I'll select these lines and place them on layer 2 using Entity Info. Now I can turn off the limestone layer and we hide that tile work. I'll sort the list by visible so that all of the layers that are off are at the bottom or at the top. I'll hit it again and sort it the other way. Shift select all of these layers that are off which I don't want to have in my model and delete them. Delete contents. So whatever's on them is gone for good. And then I'm going to go ahead and select all of the layers and delete them, but this time instead of deleting their contents, I'll move everything to the current layer, which is layer 0. It looks like there were some layers that were off the edge of the screen. I'll do that again. So now everything is on layer 0. That's going to greatly simplify the cleanup. Once you see what you want on the screen, just reduce everything to one layer. So you won't have to be fighting with layers in addition to fighting with the line work to correct everything. Now I need to go around and sort of painstakingly correct anything like this missing line, this duplicate line right here, difficult to select. I'll zoom in even more. So there's little things like that we need to get rid of. We need to sketch in additional lines in some cases. It looks like this model has the drywall represented. So I need to eliminate that if I don't want to actually model all of the drywall throughout the model, and so on. So it's kind of a tall order. There are some scripts that can help automate some of this process, and let me just show you those in the next video. The best CAD cleanup scripts come from the people at smustard.com, and a lot of people don't really know what that name means. Well, it's like this, ketchup and mustard, sketchup and smustard. Go to smustard.com slash scripts, and you'll see this list. Some of the scripts are free, while others you have to pay for. And I said I wasn't going to go over anything that you had to pay for in this product, but I will just mention some of these, because they're quite a good value for the dollar. Close Opens is a good script that closes gaps between lines, and it's $20. Delete short lines does what it says, and it's $10. Extend closed lines is like the extend tool in AutoCAD. It just makes this happen automatically, and that is $20. Intersect overlaps can be useful to create true intersection points where SketchUp doesn't really have them. That's $20. And then there are two other scripts that are free that I will demonstrate. There's stray lines, which can identify problems in your line work, and that's free. And there's make faces, which is also free, which creates faces from all the line work that you imported. You don't want to do make faces until all the line work is correct. So let's take a look at this plugin, which I've loaded, called Stray Lines. The first thing you can do is label them. And before you use this plugin, you need to make a selection, which in this case is this entire floor plan. So I'll say Stray Lines Label, and it's going to put little dimensions in that actually tell me exactly where the problems are. And it numbers them in terms of the number out of the total. So we have a total of 80 cases that we have to address. This is great because we don't have to hunt for them. These labels are going to make it more obvious. So I can zoom in here and say, okay, there's a problem there. It's identifying that as a problem. And actually, what I need to do is get rid of all of this, because I'm not interested in the drywall here. Same thing over here. Now this wasn't labeled, maybe, but I'm just going to zoom out. And actually, it was labeled over here. But I can just take care of that one case at a time. And the labels just make it a little bit easier to know where you have to go to deal with this situation. You don't need that line either. Looks like I'm going to need a line right about here to represent this return here. 
as you can appreciate, this is quite tedious, and label strays just makes it a little bit easier. After you've spent the time cleaning up the line work with the help of stray lines, it's time to make faces. Select all the line work and choose Tools, Make Faces. Now this script is analyzing all of the line work and wherever there are closed bounded areas it will generate a face. You can see the progress bar is going across the bottom of the screen. When it's done we get some statistics on how many faces were added, in this case 142, and there you go. Now it didn't do a perfect job because the line work wasn't perfect. Over here it looks like we have some manual cleanup to do. I'm going to zoom in here. It's not apparent why this didn't create a face. There must be a tiny gap in between these lines somewhere. So I'm just going to trace over that with the rectangle tool to create faces manually. And I'm just going to go around and do that everywhere in the plan. But at least Make Faces has eliminated most of the work. After you've manually created any remaining faces, it's time to start push-pulling things up to create a 3D model. I'll orbit around and switch into perspective mode. Now we have an elevation that we can use to extract height information from. I'll select all that line work and group it, and then rotate it up into its proper orientation. And in this case, this floor plan is actually not on the grade, it's up at this level. So what I'll do is slide the entire elevation down in the blue direction and snap it on the floor plan so that they're at the same datum line. Notice everything here is blue. I'm going to reverse the face and then orient faces so that all of the faces are white. Now I can go ahead and use the push-pull tool to pull up individual walls to the corresponding height. And I can snap that here on the elevation. Now in some cases you may have extra lines that got extruded. Use the eraser tool to get rid of them. So in this way you can create a 3D model directly from the plan. As I mentioned earlier, there's another school of thought on working with imported CAD line work, and that is just to let it be. I'm not going to bother cleaning all of this up. I'm just going to select it all and group it to protect it. I'll even lock the group so that we don't move it or open it or change anything having to do with it at all. Then to create a 3D model, what I'm going to do is come in here and use the rectangle tool to create rectangles right here on the surface. And if I don't get it right, I can use the push-pull tool to snap it where it should be. I'll make another rectangle here, pull it up, and reference it. Actually, since I have an elevation, I should use the push-pull tool to reference the proper height. And I can easily match that everywhere I go. So just working my way around, I'm going to use the rectangle tool, pull it up, and just keep going. And in this way, I can build up a model. And it's arguable which method is better. But it really just depends on how messy your CAD file is to start with, and how much time it would take to clean it up. This method gets around the need to clean it up entirely because you're not using the imported CAD geometry itself, you're just using it as sort of a template to snap to. Then I have to follow this up with the eraser tool to erase lines that don't really belong. But as you can see, this doesn't really take that long, and it got around the whole need to clean up the CAD line work in the first place. So you can pick the method that appeals to you the most, and go ahead and use it to create a 3D model from imported plans and elevations.